Uh, <laughs> Alright, let's see if I can get comfy. Hey guys. Hey everybody. Today is Fitness Wednesday. Come on in. Come on. Hey Valerie. I'm actually quite excited about today. So, uh, for those of you who didn't hear this, my brother um, has been um, absolutely amazing. And he's been watching the shows and critiquing them and then getting back to me. Hey, Nicole! And then getting back to me with feedback about what he thinks it is that uh, I should be offering. And I was telling him that uh, I've been kind of struggling with putting a format together. And I really believe that it was a God thing. So my brother said, hey, why don't you cook on Monday and Tuesdays? And Wednesday is business day because you're a business. And surely you have a ton of nuggets and uh, business um, acumen and that you can be sharing with people. And so it hit my spirit so hard. And here's the thing. I've been in business <sighs> Whew. on May the 5th will be 15 years. So essentially that makes my business a stubborn teenager. <laughs> and, <laughs> um, and so the truth of the matter is I do have a lot of experience and I do want to be able to pass that on. And I've said this before, whether you're interested in a full-time business, or you have full-time work and you're interested in part-time business, or if you're a stay-at-home mom, but you have a business that you are um, brewing and you really just kind of need a mentor, somebody that says, hey, how do I get this off the ground? I want to tell you that Wednesdays is going to be about mentoring you. So if you know someone who is interested in starting a business, if you know someone who is interested, um, who has phenomenal ideas, whether it's you or someone you know, meet me here every single Wednesday at 630 and we are going to go over business principles. I highly recommend that while I'm talking today, you have a pen and a paper because to, um, I really w I'm hoping that today is interactive um, I, unfortunately I've already started the live and so my screen is sideways and it means that I can only see two uh, two comments or two names at a time so I'm going to try to pay attention so that if anybody has a question I can um, deal with it um, I'm going to piggyback off a little bit of what I had talked about last week and then we're going to take it to the next step and oh, thank you, Philip. And then every week we are going to address new issues. If you have business questions, get them to me before Wednesday morning. And if I can, I'll kind of go through research. If I don't readily have an answer, I'll be able to provide something for you guys from there. Okay, so last week, <laughs> good girl, Vanessa. Last week we talked about um, understanding that everyone has personality types and everybody has their strengths. I want you to know that uh, that's a really good place to start. So if you're taking notes, here's what I want you to put at the top of your page. I want you to put strengths, okay? Now we're not going to go over those strengths right this second per se, because we already have, but this conversation about your personality strengths is probably going to come up every single Wednesday. And let me tell you why, I know I've said it, I want you to bear with me, I'm gonna tell you why again it's so important. Because if you are dealing with um, insecurities, you can almost always trace those insecurities back to something about you that you just hate, right? Because that's what it is, essentially insecurity is. But the thing is that we have to be very careful that the thing that we have described as an insecurity actually is a God-ordained trait that we have in us. And that's the, what, the one thing that, I mean, if we don't solidify that early on in this business practice, we are going to struggle again and again. Because when you are not your authentic self, period, when you struggle to be your most authentic self, you will doubt the entire process, okay? So again, we're back to talking about business planning. And this is about, this is about business planning, all right? So um, when it was time for me to start my business, now I'm going back 15 years, 
when it was time for me to start my business, one of the very first things that I did was sat down and asked myself, what are all the things that I can do and do well that I wanted to add to a business? So let's use Vanessa, for example. Vanessa, who's on Faithfully Every Day, has a very creative um, side of herself, and she absolutely loves to be able to create things and create beautiful things for other people. All right, so she loves it enough that she can see herself doing it as a business. That's a wonderful place to start. Here's another good place to start. Another good place to start is by taking your, um, taking your creative work. Now, whether your creative work is baking or it's, you know, it's cooking, Evalisa is a phenomenal cook, or whether it's uh, Vanessa's um, uh, magical creations or whether it's, you know, you can paint, or you're a writer, or whatever. The first thing that I would do is to say, have your friends and family begin to sample and taste or critique your work. All right, I want you to write this down. They are not to critique whether or not this food, this business idea, this creativity is worthy of a business okay so in case you didn't get that i'm going to say this one more time yes you should use your friends and family to say is this thing i'm giving you quality yes but you may not go to that same person and say do you think this is a good enough idea to start a business okay so i'd like somebody to give me some feedback so i know that i know that you guys understand that point i'm going to tell you why because we never go to people who have not started a business to ask them about starting a business. You understand me? So I am not going to go to someone who has not been in business for 15 years and ask for any advice regarding my business. So if you have a business idea, do not ask your family um, to support you in the type of way that says, I need your approval to determine whether this business is a great idea or not. I don't, I don't know who that's for. I, I really believe it's for everyone who's an entrepreneur. You, you need to know that. That's number one. Okay. Now, let me tell you, thank you, Shauna. I, I, I agree. That's like, that's okay. So as a business owner, um, I did tell people in the beginning that I was going to start a business. I started with my family. They loved me, but they were highly concerned about my ability to feed my family. Why? Well, because they had worked with the same company for 25 years. And that's what that generation did. And I applaud what my parents did, but it is not who I was carved out to be. So that has to make sense to you. All right. Here's another nugget. You know whether or not there is an entrepreneurial spirit on the inside of you. There is a shaking um, and a stirring. It's kind of like uh, a tree that has a lot of leaves. And the tree is shaken and shaken and shaken. And no matter how many times you shake that tree, the leaves, I'll be darned, the leaves stay on the tree. Okay? When you are... Um, when it's time and you're in the season and you begin to get these ideas and you know that you know that having a business, that you have an entrepreneurial mind, you may not put yourself in a position that somebody else, people that you love are going to come and shake the tree, okay? Now again, it's been 15 years, that's a really long time. Leaders look to leaders, okay? So... I'm a leader, obviously, right? I have 10 employees at this point in my life, which for 15 years, it kind of still seems like my business is small. In some ways, my business is small uh, because I started this business um, on the backbone of mentoring and I can only mentor so many people at a time. I have dreams and aspirations that my business is going to grow. I'm going to tell you the truth. If you were an executive who logged in, I am probably not going to have many nuggets for you because I stay in my own lane. Now, let me give you that. When you say, oh, you started a cigar company? That's amazing. <laughs> I love you too, Dana, and I miss you. Uh, I need some pasta, Friday maybe. So, 
Um, that's one of the things that you have to understand. I have been, like I said, I, you know, I've been in business long enough to know that there is so much more that I need to learn. So if someone who has been in business for 20 years comes to me and says, hey, I need help growing my business, with utter transparency, I will tell them, and I can tell you, I would not be qualified to help them grow their business. Now, there's a few reasons why that is so. One, my gifting is not in business growing. It just isn't. My gifting is not in marketing. My business, my gifting is not in execution. We talked about that last week. Remember, we said I am relational. My gifting shines in my ability to connect someone to me or one person to another person. So if you have an expanded business or whatever, I may be able to help you come out of your shell. I can most certainly give you coach it, uh, give you coaching in writing uh, or public speaking because that's where I shine. Why am I telling you this? Because when you're going to, when you're looking for an ear or you begin to look for approval for your business, you need to be very, very careful where you begin to scout that. Because what will happen is someone who is not gifted in a particular arena may have trouble having a vision that they can, um, they may, may have so much trouble with your vision that they're unable to get on board and to support you. So you have to be wise. Let me tell you something. Entrepreneurs, if they don't have it in the beginning, they will have it. They have a strong back. Marilyn Gonzalez, I love you. They have a strong backbone because you are you have to learn how to say no. You have to learn how to take a lot of no's. So um, again, I go back to giving you this example. I started my business 15 years ago, but I promise you this. There were many people who said no to me. And so part of being an entrepreneur is having enough power to say I and, and self-awareness to say I may not be good at XYZ but I know that I know that starting a business is a thing that I'm supposed to be doing and as a result of that thing it's super important that I uh, surround myself with like-minded people and I continue to find a mentor and or, or look for a mentor until I find one that says hey I believe in you. Does that make sense? I want you to kind of give me some shout out. Hey, Robin. Oh, girl, I love you so much. Um, but these are the things that are super important. And so I like to call this business plan planning. Hey, Preston. I like to call this business planning 101. Now, there are, uh, I'm sure that the world has their version of business planning. I'm going to tell you what a business plan looks like to the world. To the world, a business plan looks like you sit down, and you write out the goals of the business and, you know, who you intend on marketing. And those are great things. But I've never done a business plan. And part of the reason I never did a business plan is because I didn't require funding. Now, we are going to talk about funding businesses today. If I think I've shared this story with you, I started my business with $75. So if anybody on here has not heard the story about how I started my business with $75, give me and I'll, I'll tell the story quickly, but that's all I had to start this business. So sometimes we say the reason that I haven't started my business yet is because I'm literally not sure of the first step. Okay, so then let's talk about first steps. And this is what I mean when I say creative business planning. I don't mean an official document that you need to give to the bank. That's not what we're talking about. The type of business planning I'm talking about is this. I'm going to sit down. And I'm going to begin to write out, again, I think I said a little bit of this earlier. What is it that I want to do? Who is it that I want to help? That, that number two, that right there. Who is it that I want to help? That is what's going to keep your business um, prospering. That's what's going to keep your business moving forward on the days that are hard. On the days that you don't want to get out of bed, but you know that somebody's relying on you, somebody's excited about you, that you have that something that somebody else needs. That let me tell you something. That is the that's the thing that gives you the goosebumps, right? That's the thing that gets you out of bed in the morning when things are tough. Okay, so you have that. The other thing, hey Janelle, 
The other thing that I want you to write down is, um, <laughs> Robin, thank you so much. The other thing I want you to write down is, okay, so we said, you know, this is the thing that I want to do. These are the people that I want to help. I want you to ask yourself, how many hours is it a week that you intend on putting toward this thing? How much money, if any, do you have to invest? Do you know anyone who's already doing something um, similar to what you're doing so that you can at least begin to uh, observe some habits, observe some areas where people are investing? Those are some of the things that you want to do, okay? Once you have, and I mean, it, it doesn't matter, but you should have a notebook. And this notebook should be geared uh, completely and utterly toward your business ideas. You want to begin to fill that book with every business idea that you have. Here's what should happen eventually. And let's say that you're, you know, uh, you spend, and certainly you should spend at least a month. I mean, spend a month or two going through this book, writing down what's pa what are you passionate about? What ideas do you have? What's going to happen is over time in your, in your business diet, planning diary, if you will, again, I talked about this last week, you're going to be able to see some commonalities. And you're going to be able to say, wow, I didn't realize that I have a, you know, my dream is to do this. Do not be surprised if you have a dream behind the dream. Let me explain that to you. I needed to work. I needed to start this business. It turned out I was super handy. That was fantastic. Starting up, oh, you know what? I have these in my ear. I'm so sorry, guys. That's so rude. Long work day. Um, starting to, um, um, I needed to paint. I, I knew that I was good with color. So I knew I, I could do some interior design. I knew I had that as a knack. I knew all that was great. Okay, fantastic. But what I didn't know that was the dream behind the dream, and this comes when, again, you start to write down your ideas and, you, and then you start to look and you start to investigate, you know, you kind of do some inner investigating, is I realized that I had a heartbeat for single moms. And so my, my, um, I have an employee whose name is Norma Rivas. I, she's a single mom and I love her to pieces. I have um, uh, my Adriana in South Bend is a single mom. And my Michelle, who watches my show faithfully every day, uh, who I said yesterday is like a daughter to me, uh, she's also a single mom. And it's not that I don't love all of my employees. I love them all. But I have a special place in my heart for my single moms. And because of the dream behind the dream, the way that I mentor, the way that I operate my business, the way that I run my business is fundamentally different than every other construction company that I know of. So it's interesting to me when people say, oh, she owns a construction company. Yes, I do own a construction company, but I mentor women using my construction company as a vehicle to provide my single moms with a better life. And so hopefully that kind of makes sense in terms of like writing your ideas down making sure that you are very, very clear. And this is why if you are always thinking about your ideas, but they never go from here to here, you are going to lose a part of, sometimes you'll lose a part of, I mean, it's kind of like a piece of a puzzle. You know, sometimes you'll have this phenomenal idea and the idea really needs to be written down because what you don't know is that, 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 inc oh my gosh, I just had like an epiphany. Well, here's the thing. We have kids, we have family, we have work, we have spouses. Well, y'all have spouses. I don't have spouses. Uh, you have, you operate a household and you would think that it's an epiphany, right? It's going to stay with you forever. Well, it may, but it may not. And so part of this is, um, Am I writing these things down? Am I uh, fully understanding? Am I get engaging possibly with other entrepreneurs? Now, here's another thing. Um, I highly recommend that you find a group. Facebook is famous for groups. And it's taken me a long time to realize that Facebook has every group under the sun. I promise you that they have entrepreneurial groups. There needs to be a group of people that you connect with that are on the same race as you. 
the people that you can enjoy your journey with, people that you can share ideas. When I started this business, I did not have, um, I didn't have social media. Now, 15 years, I think I've only been on Facebook since 2009, excuse me, and quite frankly, I don't know what year it began. Hey, Amanda, I'm not sure what year it began, but there's already an advantage for an entrepreneur moving forward. If you're not savvy, I know with the younger kids, you guys are savvy with, you know, all of the social media, but certainly you need to learn how to tweet. You need to learn how to um, use Facebook. Understand that the, a tweeting platform is completely different than a Facebook platform. And then you have to ask yourself, again, um, you know, how much do I want to have myself out there? I'm telling you now, this is business 101. You're not ready for that. You know, if you don't have a full plan, if you haven't already sat down with a mentor, if you don't already have uh, pieces of the puzzle, then quite frankly, you're not ready for a logo. And sometimes we get so excited about um, uh, what, is, what is it going to look like on paper and I'm going to have a logo for my business and all of that. That's great. But those things come later down the line. You will know when your business is ready because it will feel like um, a train you cannot stop. It'll keep you from eating. It'll keep you from sleeping. But for right now, I highly encourage you, get that notebook going. Start writing these ideas. Like I said, every Wednesday, we are going to be talking about business nuggets. And I want to be able to mentor you from here because I want to keep you from making some of the mistakes that I made so hopefully this is a kind of a good start um, I had written some notes let's see um, you know I kind of feel like we're gonna talk about this more next week um, but one of the things that I want to say is this is not the time to be asking yourself if you can afford to start a business so I, like I said earlier, I was I had seventy five dollars to my name when I started this business, and um, for those of you who don't know, I didn't just start this business with seventy five dollars. But here's what I did with that seventy five dollars: I passed out flyers door to door. Uh, Hayden was six months old. Amaya Rose was two and a half. Brittany was thirteen. I literally had my last seventy five dollars. I went to the store. I purchased uh, some ink and I purchased some paper. And I printed 500 of the most generic flyers you have ever seen. And Brittany and I trifolded 500 flyers. And we put those babies in a double stroller. And we went to a town in uh, Beverly in Illinois. And we passed out those flyers door to door until the first person hired me. So I didn't have... Um, I didn't even have the wisdom to know that I was taking on what I was taking on. And so even though we say all the time that ignorance is bliss, um, and, then, and then we say, no, ignorance will get you in trouble. No, no, no. For me, ignorance was bliss. Because if I'd have known now what I knew then, or if I'd have known, right, if I'd have known then what I knew now, <laughs> I would never have started a business. So I'm going to end with this. I have a friend who I love, who has a degree, and he's a phenomenal man, somebody that I look up to, very, very polished, um, very well spoken, he and his wife, I mean, they have an amazing family, I mean, th this is the kind of guy that you totally look up to, and I spoke with him about a year or so ago, and we've always talked about uh, his business versus my business. And he went to, like I said, he got a college degree, and then he went to get, got a business. He went to business school so he could have, um, understand the trades of starting a business. And when I knew him, I'm talking about, this is about 20, oh, no, I started in 2006. So maybe around 20, I don't know, 2004, somewhere around the time that Hayden was born. So yeah, 2004. And when I caught up with him again a couple of years ago, so that would have been somewhere around 2018. Um, he sat down with me and told me that he never started his business and he never started his business because he knew too much. So he decided that he was never going to start because he knew uh, how many businesses fail and, and essentially um, here's this guy that I'm looking up to. And I'm thinking, you know, he's getting ready to start this business and he was in business school while I was already, you know, kind of, actually I didn't, yeah, I started my business in 2005, so it was somewhere around there. 
And I think it's very interesting that here we got this guy and he's got, you know, a business degree and he's done all of these things and he didn't start this business at the end of the day because he let fear become, um, become an engine. And so one of the things that I said when I started doing this, I don't know, I, I've lost count of how many days before I was like to say, oh, today's day 17, but now I can't even remember how many days. Hey, Rob, hey, Robin Inkins, how are you? Um, but now, you know, I'm here to tell you that you are going to find people who tell you that it's not a good idea. You are going to tell, have people that tell you that owning a business and being an entrepreneur is reckless. You are. You are going to have people that tell you that you need to go work for a company so that you can have benefits. You are going to tell you that have people who tell you that you can't possibly start that business because that business has already been started by someone else. But if that was the case, we would not have more than one burger joint. We would not have more than one cupcake place. We would not have more than one major computer. We would not have more than one um, cell phone uh, carrier. We would not have more than one big box store. So don't get lost in the fact that your business may look and or feel like someone else. And so this is how we go full circle all the way back to if you don't deal with your insecurities, you will never get your foot off the ground. And how do I deal with my insecurities, Norma? Well, one of the ways that you're going to do that is by, is by personal development. And that's not going to happen if you do not commit yourself to understanding who you are. And so I go right back to that book. If you have not gotten that book, last week I recommended a book. I put it on my, it's called Strength Finders. You need to, hey sis, you need to know what your strengths are. So if you didn't see it, it's called Strength Finders. It's a $20 book. Buy the book, order it, take the assessment, find out who you are, and start from there. All right, guys, that's already almost 30 minutes, so I'm going to let you go from here. Um, please, please share this one. You know, of all of the ones, especially, you know, in a time like this where, the, you know, the world is kind of at a crisis and people are losing their jobs. Well, I didn't lose my job because I didn't have a job to lose. I own my own business. And I think about this, if there's ever a time in your life when you're thinking, I, there's something more. I'm, I'm, okay. I'm happy, I'm okay with what I'm doing, but I know that I know that I know that there's something more there for me. If that's how you feel and you are looking for um, somebody who is going to hold your hand and tell you that you can, if you are looking, if you woke up at some point, you saw this post and you think, I just need, I just, Lord, I'm looking for clarity. Should I do this? Yes, you should. Do you understand? invest in you you have something unique for the world and the lord says to you run and i'll take care of you you will know that you know if this podcast or this live is not for you on wednesdays you'll know but if it's for you stay tuned and just know that you have somebody who loves you i say it all the time i love you jesus loves you and let's help you get your business off the ground together. All right, guys, have a great night. I absolutely adore you. Send me business ideas, business questions, blah, 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 and meet me back here next Wednesday. All right, have a good night.